Um, this is our practice teaching training flow. So as you guys know, this is where we come to join up and talk and discuss and share our practice teaching training skills or just teach our yoga skills. A lot of us are already becoming professionals. So, hey, would anyone like to share anything with the group here today? Or does anyone want to show off their teaching skills with us today? For privacy, attendees, teaching portions has been edited out. Anytime uh, attendees should talk has also been edited out. This is a safe zone to come and just practice and learn yoga. Thank you. Meanwhile, we'll gather any supplies we may need. I already have my water here. I'm ready to go. Maybe you grab something to drink as well. Hey, Sonia, how are you? So last week when we ended our flow, we were prepping and going into um, headstand. We're just doing a couple of headstand prep poses and we discussed and spoke about hard pose. Did anyone get a chance to go over hard pose over the last couple of days? So hard pose is a pose that we like to do to prep the body for a headstand. Mm -hmm. But of course there are many other poses, but when it comes to a headstand, we know that we apply pressure to the top parts of our head. And like with anything that we do when it comes to exercise and strength building, we have to allow the body part to get used to or build strength and to get to new levels in our um, practice today. So we're going to start our yoga practice out and just relaxing and winding down our mind and our bodies. And then we're going to do a couple of hard poses, which is on the top of our heads. The top of the head meaning the same place where the soft spot is at on a baby's head. So the top of the head, a lot of people, when they do headstand, they like put pressure to the front, kind of like closer to the forehead. No, we want to be at that cape, the top of the head. We also want to be mindful of our neck. So when we're in our hard pose, we want to try to come into a comfortable position before we push our bodies up on our feet. Because again, one of the issues with headstands is if the head isn't right and the neck isn't aligned, it can cause, comfort, it can cause discomfort and maybe even strain the neck. So listening to your body, and only pushing your buttocks up in the air if it feels good for you. So we have a couple people here now, so we are going to get started. And asking that we find our bodies in a comfortable seated pose to wind and relax down our bodies here today. Any easy seat, any seated pose that feels good for you, may you find your seat winding down here today. Ensuring that our spinal cords are nice and elongated, meaning we are not sunken. Having control of that body. With the shoulders relaxed downward away from the ears. This allows us to relax and soothe the upper parts of our bodies. Gaze in the eyes downward or close in the eyes. If that feels good. As we take a nice deep breath in. Exhale. Breathe in deeply. Exhale fully. Taking a moment to notice how the breath feels within the body. As we breathe our palms and heart center, coming into that seated prayer, maybe our thumbs are touching our sternum, the center of our chest, if that feels good for you. As we relax here, silent meditation or natural breaths. Two breaths. Exhale, relaxing our palms downward to the sides of our bodies. Our palms are connected to the earth. We are connecting to our environment here. Taking a moment to notice what is going on around us right here, right now, in our present moment. And during our session here today, we may hear noises and sounds we may become distracted. However, may we only allow in what is comforting and soothing for us in our practice here today. Two more breaths. Breathe in. Exhale. Flowing the arms above the head, coming into that salute, fingertips flows up towards the heavens, 
feeling the shoulders flow up towards the ears. Spinal cords are nice and long. Heart chakras open, chin is up. Interlacing those fingers together with their pointer finger pointing up towards the heavens, allowing the arms to flow slightly towards the back. This is a slight back bend. Three breaths. Two breaths. Exhaling back to center, separating those palms. We are now in that seated extended mountain. When our palms are separated, it is an extended mountain. When our palms are together above our head, it is called a salute. So we are now in that extended mountain. Just taking a moment to notice the difference between the two. Two breaths. Exhale, leaning the body to the side, coming into that seated side bend. If we fill up to it, gazing up at the heavens, opening up their heart chakra, two breaths. Holding this position, lowering that right arm downward towards the earth, coming deeper in that bend. We are in that nice deep side bend, feeling that stretch here in that side body. Taking nice subtle breaths. Two more breaths. Exhaling back to center, coming into that salute. Mm. Breathe in. Exhale. Flowing into that extended mountain, separating those palms, leaning the body towards the left side, bend opposite side, slightly gazing up at the heavens if that feels good, opening up their heart chakra. Tummies are nice and tight at our navel. Two more breaths. Holding this position, lowering that left arm downward towards the earth, coming deeper in that side bend. Feeling that full stretch here in that side body. Two more breaths. Exhale back up the center, coming into that seated Star. Palms are out towards the side. Keeping that heart chakra open, chin is up. Tummies are tight at our navel. Gaze in the eyes downward or closing the eyes. Feeling nice and strong here in our star. Feeling nice and bright. Two more breaths. Exhaling our palms above our head in that salute. Breathing down to our prayer, palms come heart center, relaxing those shoulders downward away from the ears. Taking a nice deep breath in. Exhale through the mouth. As we flow our feet into a bound position, coming into a diamond or a butterfly, our feet are together. In a butterfly, our feet are closer towards our bodies. This is a Hip opener, a deep hip opener. We ever have clients who say they have tight hips, we can put them in this diamond or butterfly. Again, a butterfly is a deeper hip opener. A diamond, our feet come further away from our body, so it's not as deep. It's still a hip opener, but not a deep hip opener. So doing what feels best for you, connecting the hands to the ankles, and we're going to slightly hinge at the hips just a little. Noticing that when we hinge at the hips, you'll feel it a little more here in your inner thigh. As the shoulders melt forward, head comes downward towards the feet if we're able, coming into a deeper bend. Gaze in the eyes, down or closing the eyes. Nice, subtle breaths. Two more breaths. <clears throat> Exhaling up, come into that down position. Straightening our legs in front of us, coming into that staff pose. Legs are parallel side by side. Feet are pointing up towards the heavens. Spinal cords nice and long. Heart chakras open, chin is up. Gaze in the eyes down, placing our palms in our laps. Keeping that tummy nice and tight at the navel. Gazing forward, taking a moment to go inwards. Noticing how our mind and our body feels here in our staff pose, being aware. Two more breaths. Breathe in through the nose. Exhale through the mouth. 
as we hinge at the hips, coming into that half forward fold. This is a full body stretch. You'll feel this behind your legs and your hamstrings. To come deeper in that stretch, we can come into a complete forward fold, allowing the torso to come closer towards the thighs. Hands reach down to our ankles or our feet as our head melts downward towards our knees. Feeling this full body stretch. Three more breaths. Pointing those toes downward towards the earth, going deeper in that stretch. Two more breaths. And exhaling up to half forward fold, coming up to our staff pose. We're going to take this right feet, bring that right knee in the air, right foot is flat on the earth. Our last class, we did uh, Sage Marici. We split it, um, well, we actually went like this, but we're going to work on a different Sage Marici this time. So feet is flat on the earth, knees in the air. We're going to take this right arm, bring it behind our backs with our fingertips facing away from us. Yes, we're going to take this left arm and cross it over our left leg as we gaze over our right shoulder. And we'll feel this final twist. This here is a Sage Marici too. This is a slight back bend. It allows us to decompress and relax our spine. Taking nice subtle breaths with our eyes gaze down or closed. Two more breaths. Exhaling back to center, coming into that staff pose, straightening out that leg, hinging at the hips, coming into a half forward or a complete forward fold, whatever you choose. Three breaths. Pointing those toes downward towards the earth in that ballerina's foot. <sighs> Two more breaths. Exhaling up to our staff pose. Backs elongated as we bring that left knee up in the air, right? I'm sorry, left knee up in the air, left foot is flat on the earth. We're going to cross this left knee over that right leg. Taking this left hand, bringing it behind our bodies with our fingertips facing away from us. Bringing this right elbow over that left knee, yes. Gazing over that left shoulder. Feeling this nice final twist here. Spinal cord is decompressing. You may even feel or hear a couple of cracks. Gaze in the eyes downward, taking nice subtle breaths. Two more breaths. Exhaling back to center, coming into that staff pose. Spinal cords are nice and elongated as we breathe our palms above our heads in that salute. Chin is up, heart chakra is open. Interlacing those fingers. Point the finger points up towards the heavens. Arms slow, arms flow slightly towards the back. Two more breaths. Exhaling back to center, breathing the palms down their heart center, coming into that seated prayer, relaxing those shoulders downward away from the ears. Coming back into our bound position, either our diamond or our butterfly. Straightening our bodies, our bodies, our spinal cords are nice elongated here. Connecting our hands to our feet, gazing the eyes down or closing the eye. Allowing the shoulders to relax. We're going to do a couple of head rotations. Let's make a circle of motions with our neck. Nice and slow. We're simply just checking in to see how our neck feels. Ensuring that we don't have any pain or discomfort in our necks by doing our circle of, our circle of rotation. So maybe gaze in the eyes down or close in the eyes. Moving the neck nice and slowly. Simply checking in with it. Two more breaths. We're going to find our pause and rotate our neck in the opposite direction. Three more breaths. 
Finding our pause, coming into our diamond or our butterfly, opening up their heart chakra, chin is up. Coming back to center, exhaling, hinging at the hips, coming slightly down, head melts downward towards the feet. Three breaths. And exhaling back up to center. <clears throat> Using our hands to bring our knees in. Crossing our feet at our ankles. Tabletop pose. Flowing onto our hands and our knees. Palms are flat on the earth. Feet are relaxed. As our tummy comes downward towards the earth, heart chakra is open, chin is up. Feeling this in your lumbar, your lower spine. This cow pose is great for lower back pain. Gaze in the eyes, stand with a close in the eyes. We're going to hang out here, three breaths. Two breaths. As we flow to our calf, bringing that chin to the clavicle, spinal cord flows to the heavens, calf holds. Tummy so tight at our navel, three breaths. Two breaths. Flowing back to our cow. Chin is up. Exhale to our cat. Coming to our table, we are back in that neutral position. Both of our palms are flat on the earth. We're going to come into, we're going to work on our heart pose. Allowing our torso to come down, we're going to come onto the tops of our heads. Maybe walking our knees a little closer to our bodies. And it's very similar to a puppy pose, but it is not a puppy pose. And we're simply just going to hang out here. And just take notice of how this feels within our bodies. Four breaths. And if you're able, maybe take both of your hands off the earth. Just lifting your hands up, keeping your head down. Yes, yes. And just seeing how that feels when you take your hands off the earth. You can just simply just lift your hands up. Yes, just lift them up. Noticing how that feels. What we're doing is we're simply just prepping the tops of our heads. Allowing our bodies to feel comfortable with pressure being up there. Placing the palms back down to the yoga mat whenever you're ready. Just simply play, playing around. Three more breaths. Two breaths. And slightly coming up into that tabletop position, holding our pose, just lifting our body up into our table and slightly gazing at the computer screen. Just noticing how we are. Yes. And just watch me just for one second. I'm going to come back down to the heart pose and I'm going to take my hands off the yoga mat. And now I'm going to use my feet to push my buttocks up in the air. And maybe even pulse up and down on the tippy toes. So we're all now going to give that a try. We're going to flow back into our heart pose. Walking our knees towards our chest puts us better into that pose. Everybody will feel different in their body. So listening to your body, doing what feels good for you. At any time, if it feels discomfort, please come out of the pose and come into a child's pose or puppy pose. Now we're going to take our hands off the earth the way I just did. Just simply lifting your palms from a yoga mat. Yes, just playing around. And then placing them back down whenever you're ready. Then lifting them back up and placing them back down whenever you're ready. Walking our knees close to our chest as much as it feels comfortable for us. So now we're going to try to use our feet to push our buttocks up in the air. 
pushing the buttocks up in the air if we're able. Yes. Feeling the pressure here on your head. Yes. Ensuring that you don't feel any pain or discomfort in your neck coming out if you do. Playing around with it coming up and down, pulsing up and down on your tippy toes. Coming back down to the hard pose, resting the body. And then pushing your legs back up with the buttocks high in the air. We're going to do a couple of these rotations. Just prepping and preparing the body for headstand. Maybe six more rotations. Exhaling down to our knees, we're going to flow into a child's pose or a puppy pose, whatever feels best for you, allowing our heart chakra to flow downward towards the earth. Our forehead, our third eye chakra is connected to the yoga mat. With our arms extended in front of us, if that feels good for you, or connecting our hands to our feet, or flowing into a prayer, hands. Whatever you choose, gaze in the eyes down, close in the eyes. We're going to go inward, relaxing here for five natural breaths. Three more breaths. Mm. Extending our arms in front of us if they were not already coming into their extended child's pose or puppy pose. Two more breaths. With our palms flat on the earth, we're going to spinal wave our bodies out of our child's pose or puppy pose, maybe doing six spinal waves. Feeling this in your spinal cord. Allowing your head and neck to flow into the wave. Getting that full spinal cord rotation here. Three more breaths. Mm -hmm. Tightening our tummy as we wave, keeping that core nice and tight. Two more breaths. Mm -hmm. As we find our pause at center, coming into that tabletop pose, we're gonna push our bodies up to our down dog, gazing at our feet. Mm -hmm. Walking our dog by pedaling our feet left and right. Find and pause as we breathe to a three-legged dog, reaching that right leg up in the air, gazing back at that foot. Mm. Exhale, knee to elbow or knee to nose, feeling that crunch. Back to three-legged. Knee to elbow, knee to nose. Back to three-legged. Knee to elbow, knee to nose. Flowing back three-legged. Mm. Exhale, down dog, gazing at the feet. Tummies are tight. As we walk our dog, we are building strength in our arms. We're going to keep on flowing. Finding pause. Three-legged dog, opposite side. Left leg flows in the air, gazing back at the foot. Feeling that stretch. Exhale, knee to elbow or knee to nose, feeling that crunch. Back to three-legged. Knee to elbow, knee to nose. Back to three-legged. Knee to elbow, knee to nose. Back to three-legged, two breaths. 
Exhale, down dog. As we flow into our forearms, <sighs> buttocks is high in the air. Dolphin pose. This too is a headstand prep pose. We are prepping the mind, prepping the body here in our dolphin pose. We are also using this pose to regulate our heartbeat. Feeling the heart come back down, slowing down. Taking nice subtle breaths as we are building strength. Pulsing up and down on your tippy toes if that feels good for you, if it feels good. Four more breaths. <clears throat> Two breaths. <clears throat> Dropping down to our knees, we're going to come into a wide-legged child's pose, a puppy pose. Doing the opposite of what we just did. So if it was in our child's pose, we're going to come into a puppy pose and vice versa. Allowing that body to relax and soothe. Heart chakra is connected to the earth. Third eye chakra, our forehead is connected to the earth. Eyes are gazed down or closed. Shoulder blades or melted floor. Breathe in deeply. Exhale. We're gonna relax and soothe going inward for six natural breaths. Mm Three more breaths. Mm -hmm. Flowing into a puppy pose if we're in the child's pose. Bringing our knees closer to our chest, buttocks is nice and high in the air. Puppy pose. We're going to relax here for three more breaths. Bringing our hands inward like we do in our hard pose. We're going to flow our bodies into that hard pose. Coming back onto the tops of our heads, the capes of our heads, the same spot where the ball spot, the soft spot is at on the baby's head. Positioning our head and our neck to feel comfortable. Just hanging out, just checking in here, hanging out. As we use our feet to push our buttocks high in the air, Feeling the buttocks come high, feeling more pressure is applied to the top of the head. Yes, just hanging out, seeing how this feels. Two more breaths. Mm -hmm. Hanging out here in this pose, we're going to tap our knee to our elbow, bringing that knee into the elbow. Knee to elbow, see that? Knee to elbow, then opposite knee to elbow. Knee to elbow. Opposite knee to elbow. Holding the knee to elbow for a couple breaths. Building strength. This is preparing that body to go into headstand. And if you choose, you can bring one knee to elbow. And place that knee on the elbow. And if anyone needs to come out, I invite you to please come out and watch me do the knee to elbow taps. And then I'm going to place my elbows on my knees. Just give it a try. So once I do it, then I'm going to ask you guys to do it as well, but only if it feels comfortable for you. So going back into the hard pose, I'm going to do the positions we just did, and then I'm going to do the knee to elbow tap. Then I'm going to place my knees on my elbow, and I'm going to be in that eggshell headstand. Hard pose. Coming up on my toes. Pulsing up and down on my toes. Tapping my knees to elbow. Taking our time, knees to elbow tap, holding it there, allowing the body to feel comfortable. And then you're going to bring that knee to elbow, 
Come up just a little bit. Bring that other knee to elbow. And now we're in that eggshell headstand. We can even extend the leg up in the air. If that feels good, we give it a try again. <sighs> Bring one leg up in the air. Okay. It's not working right now. I want to flip over. I'm going to give it another try. Coming up, knee to elbow. Knee to elbow. We'll start out. Just taking a moment to do the taps first. And then seeing if you can bring that knee to that elbow and then that other knee to the elbow. At any time, we can flow into our child's pose or puppy pose and just simply hang out and relax. So we are going to freestyle here, playing around with our headstand, headstand prep, doing whatever parts of this prep that feels best for you to prepare the mind and body. So we're going to do about 10 breaths of freestyling here, whatever feels good for you, just playing around and having some fun. Six more breaths, having fun, freestyle. Two more breaths. Coming out whenever you choose, we're going to flow back into our child's pose or puppy pose, allowing that heart chakra to connect to the earth. Use any earth to relax and soothe that heart. Gaze in the eyes down with that third eye chakra forehead connected to the yoga mat. Taking a nice deep breath in. Exhale. Release it. Anything that no longer serves us. Noticing how we feel in our moments. Noticing the thoughts that are going on within our head. Being mindful and being aware without judgment. Always remember, always remembering to be kind and loving to oneself. We're going to relax here in silent meditation. Five natural breaths. Mm. Feeling the mind and body soothes. Three more breaths. Two breaths. Extending our arms in front of us, we're going to spinal wave our bodies out of our child's pose or puppy pose. Two more breaths. Finding pause at center, we're gonna cross our feet at our ankles, coming back into a seated pose. Any seated pose of choice. I'm going to come to a cow face legs. Relaxing and soothing. Spinal cord is elongated. Tummies are nice and tight at our navel. Shoulders are relaxed downward away from our ears. Gaze in the eyes downward or closing the eyes. Taking a nice deep breath in. Exhale. Softly opening up our eyes and gazing back at each other on our computer screens. And I just want to check in with everyone and see how 
everyone feels within their body, within their neck, from practicing the headstand prep here today. Anyone have anything they want to share or discuss or go over with the group here today? In an inversion position, meaning upside down, so body's not used to that. So you could have all types of feelings and sensations within the body. And that's why I said, notice how you feel within. Take notice of that. Yes. So again, with practice and just being up against a wall and just having your feet on a wall is going to help us prepare our minds and bodies for a headstand. And then eventually the feeling you feel within your ears will go away unless there's another reason you have the feeling like water's in your ears. But eventually the feelings will go away because again, our body's just not used to being in an inversion position. We are on our feet, heads in the air. Now we got our head down, feet up in the air. So you could feel any types of, of sensations within your body. So again, listening to your body and coming out of the poses whenever it doesn't feel good for you. Yes. So thank you for sharing that. Anyone else have anything? Wendy, I see your mic came off. Hello. So thank you for that. You're welcome. You're welcome. Because a lot of people do go to the front of their head, thinking it's more closer to the forehead. No, it's that the top, the really right there, right on the top. It's where you want to center and position to really keep your body up there. Yes. Yes. So how does how does your neck feel? Everything felt good within the neck? Um, I do. Her neck felt fine. She's just rebuilding strength and getting familiarized with the pose again. Anyone else have anything they would like to share or to add? Okay. Was it either or? <laughs> yes, it was either or. It was knee to elbow or knee to nose. Because some people put their knees right to their nose and their forehead. I can't go that deep in yet. I just do knee to elbow. Yeah. Which is, but I also did that knee to elbow um, tap because I knew that we was going to go into that headstand and we was going to do the tap in the headstand. So that... That three-legged dog to that knee to elbow was, was the one strengthening our arms and preparing our bodies to go up and headstand. Because again, remember in yoga, we have to do prep poses before we do that peak pose. So that headstand was kind of like our peak pose. So we went into that downward dog, we did the three-legged dog, and then we did that knee to elbow or knee to nose prep. All of that was positioning ourselves to go into that eggshell or tripod headstand is what Wendy called it, yes. But it's, it's that... Knee to elbow or knee to nose, but my knee can't go to my nose. But people be doing that knee to their nose, so it's knee to elbow, three legged, or knee to nose. But I just do knee to elbow because see, even this, we are see we're working and building strength in our arms. See that there, so that when we're in our headstand, we have a little bit more strength in our arms. So that knee to elbow was prepping our bodies for that tap we was ready to do once we fold into our headstand. But yes, and as we are teaching. We are going to come up with our own techniques to prep our students into poses. Because again, we have those prep poses and then we have that peak pose. But again, those peak poses are, are considered those more harder or advanced poses. So we always want to prep the body and prep the student before putting them into. It's kind of like a warm up. So we're warming up the body, warming up the student before we put them into those advanced or a little bit more harder to do poses. Other people probably was thinking the same thing and just an X. So that was great clarification and questions and answers is always great because it helps everyone understand and see what is going on. But again, yes. So thank you for that question. And I see Wendy is also doing a singing bowl. So, because again, there's something about the vibrations of the music that helps with the sensations and vibrations within the body. And we just had a nice little intense session here today. So um, if Wendy want to do a singing bowl, maybe we can do 10 minutes, 10 minutes of Okay, so very subtle sound. Okay, great. Yes. All right, beautiful. So these things are amazing, as we all know. Mm -hmm. Okay, Sonia, my apologies, but we are going to let you flow. And, and this is what happens when you do like 10 jobs. Sonia is all yours. <laughs> Thank you.